Hey Math 31, I had a question on number five from section 4.2, and the direction said find the area of a parallelogram bounded by the y-axis, the line x equals three, the line f of x being one plus two x and parallel, and the line parallel to f of x passing through two seven. So let's let's talk about all of these as we get through here. So the first thing they talked about was this this parallelogram and this is my parallelogram right in here and I want to show you how I get to that parallelogram so let me change some colors up the first thing they talked about was the y-axis so this was one of my boundaries all right the next thing that they talked about was the line x equaling three so this is another boundary all right and then they mentioned the line one plus two x so if we just take a look at this line this has a y-intercept at 0, 1, and oops, let me write that a little bit up better. 0, 1, and a slope of 2. So I would start that point here, right? I would have my y-intercept at, at 1, and then I would go up to over 1. Oops, that wasn't my best up to over 1. Let me go up to over 1, up to over 1. So you can start to see that line that would form. And let me undo this just a bit. So here's the line y equaling 1 plus 2x. And then the next thing it said was, hey, can you get a line parallel to this 1 plus 2x, but it needs to pass through this ordered pair 2 comma 7. Ooh, I am having all sorts of typos. Let me write through 2 comma 7. So if we go over to 2 comma 7, you can see that ordered pair right there. And here's that line, that parallel line that goes through it. Now, if I wanted to get the equation of that line, we know if we have an ordered pair and we know that parallel lines have the same slopes, so I could have done y minus y1 equaling m times x minus x sub one. Here would have been y minus seven equaling two times x minus two. y minus seven would equal two x minus four. And then you can see me getting here to two x plus three. Now, I just wrote it as three plus two x only because the line they had given me before was in the form one plus two x with the constant written first. And, and typically when we go to stats problems, we write the constant first. So as you take a look at this, you can see that the parallelogram that's bounded by those four lines, and again, my four lines are the y-axis, x equaling zero, y equaling one plus two x, and three plus two x. You can see that, that that parallelogram right there, it was shaded in orange, and I need to find the area of this thing. So I broke this down in this setting that I, I said, well, let's take a look at the giant rectangle here. So I have a rectangle right? and I, I colored that in in blue and I could find the area of that rectangle pretty easily because the area formula for a rectangle is just base times height. And then I noticed that if we cut off my parallelogram here, that I have a triangle let me go ahead and get a different color. I have a triangle here, and I said, well, the area for that is one half base times height. And then down here, I have, let me do a different color. Let's do darker purple. I have a trapezoid, and the area of that is one half times base one plus base two in parentheses times the height. And these are all area formulas that we would have picked up for our, from our geometry days. One thing I do want to mention, though, that when you see B1 and B2, they're talking about these parallel sides. So that's where those numbers are coming from. Now, or at least those, those um, expressions are coming from. The, the numbers themselves um, come from plugging into the function, and I'll explain that in a bit. So when you see this formula down here, this first one, I said, well, the area of the rectangle, it's if I add the triangle, the parallelogram, and the trapezoid together, if I add this piece, this piece, and this piece together, I have the area of the rectangle. And keeping in mind that ultimately what I want to find is the area of this parallelogram because that's what I'm being asked to find. So then it becomes an algebra problem. Well, if I can find the area of the triangle, which I think I can, if I can find the area of the trapezoid, which I think I can, and if I could find the area of the rectangle, again, which I think I can because I have these three area formulas, I could solve for the area of the parallelogram and, and find the solution to my problem. So that's, that's the game plan. 
going around here. So that's why you see me keep this quantity. All right, I want to solve for this quantity, so I'm going to move the area of the triangle to the left side of the equation, the area of the trapezoid to the left side of the equation. But I usually like to write the variable that I'm solving for on the left side. So you can see it's the area of the rectangle minus the other two. All right, and so that's where all of these formulas are coming from. Now with that all being said, I'm going to erase my scratch work so we can get into the nitty gritty of how I got all of these numbers here. So give me a moment to erase this stuff. All right, there we go. All right, now how did I actually start to do this? Okay, so the first thing I need is the area of the rectangle. I think I was doing that in blue. So the area of a rectangle is gonna be base times height. So if I look at my base, I can see my base is three units long. And in terms of my height, there's a couple ways I could do it. In this case, I could just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's where you see me getting three times nine. You also could just plug in to this line, I, I don't know that I'd necessarily recommend this. I think this might take a little longer, but this line up here was three plus two X. And if I plug three in, right, F of three would give me three plus two times three, which would give me nine. So this is the ordered pair three comma nine. So I can see here, oops, excuse me, that the height is nine and that's where I'm getting that number of nine. Now, again, for, for this particular um, shape the rectangle. I, I don't think I'd use this whole plugging in to a function, but we will use that idea moving forward. So I thought, hey, we could introduce it now. All right, so the next thing I have to do is I have to get the area of the triangle. And again, area of the triangle is one half base times height. So let's see, we can see that the triangle here has the same base, right? And then let's go count the height here. So my height would be, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, I don't think I said it out loud, but the base is three. So I can see here that the height is six. And that's where, let me change these colors, I'm getting the three times six. Now again, if you wanted to, I don't know that I would recommend it, but if, if I wanted to get this ordered pair, well, that's on, again, the line three plus two X, but this time I would plug in zero for X and I get three plus two times zero, which is three. So this is the ordered pair zero, three, meaning that the height right there is three units tall, but keep in mind this entire height we knew was nine units tall. And if I have, oh, that's not what I want. If I have nine here and three here, then that difference has to be six. All right, so then the fun begins with the trapezoid. So let me change the colors on all of this so we can stay consistent. So now I wanna find, oops, excuse me. I wanna find the area of that trapezoid. So when it comes to the area of the trapezoid, when you hear base one and base two, they're the parallel side. So this is gonna be base one, this is gonna be base two. So again, if you wanna look at this height here, or I should say this base here, I could plug in not so much to three plus two X, but this function now is one plus two X. If I plug zero in here, I get one plus two times zero, which is just one. So if this is the ordered pair zero, one, then I can see that height is gonna be one. And when I say height, keep in mind, these are what we call bases. So when you look at the area formula for a trapezoid, the B1 and the B2 are the parallel sides to the trapezoid. So that's where I'm getting this one happening. Now I need to find B2 which means I want this ordered pair. I could count it on my grid mark or we could plug in, we can plug in this X value of three over here, but again, it's on the lower line. So I wanna plug it into the line one plus two X. So now when I plug in three, I'll get one plus two times three, which is seven. This has gotta be the ordered pair zero seven, and that makes my next height seven units. And you can see here that the base, right? Or what, excuse me, what they would call the height in the formula is three like it always is. So that's where, oops, excuse me, I'm getting this number three here. Once you see where all of those numbers are coming from, I'm gonna erase a little bit here so we can see it, then it's just a, an arithmetic problem, right? It's actually crunching these numbers and getting to the fact that the area of your parallelogram is gonna be six. All right, so I hope that clears up number five. Thanks so much, see you later, bye.